Blender Operations Notebook number one. Curve Deform Modifier using Geometry Nodes. Curve Deform Modifier the traditional way. Let's demonstrate how to apply a Curve Deform Modifier to an object. Here, I increased the cube size along the y-axis by 20 units. I entered edit mode and made 20 cuts along the y-axis. Then I added a Bezier curve, which will be used to deform the object. I scaled and edited this curve. I selected the object, went to the modifiers menu, and added a Curve Deform modifier. I selected our Bezier curve as the curve object. In this tutorial, we will use the y-axis for deformation. Done. Now the object will be deformed according to the shape of the curve along the y-axis. Now, let's show how to create this modifier using geometry nodes. In geometry nodes, there isn't a native node for this purpose, so we'll need to build it manually, and here we'll explain how. We'll need an object, in this case a cube that will be deformed, and a curve. Each point on the curve has a normal vector in red, and a tangent vector in green both of which can be read directly. However, we'll need a third vector calculated from the two previously mentioned ones using a mathematical operation called cross product. Besides these vectors, we'll also need the position of each point along the curve. Geometry Nodes already has a node called sample, which directly reads position, normal, and tangent vectors of each point on the curve. The other required vector is perpendicular to the normal and tangent vectors, and is calculated using the cross product. The normal and tangent vectors are directly read using the sample node. The cross product vector is perpendicular to the plane formed by the normal and tangent vectors, shown in blue in the video. But how do we calculate this vector? No need to do it manually. Blender calculates it for you. Here we have a parallelopiped that will be deformed to match this curve. Each point of the parallel pipet along the y-axis corresponds to a proportional position along the curve. Each point along y will be positioned along the curve, considering the direction of the normal and cross product vectors at that point. To do this, we'll map the x value of each object vertex to the normal vector of the corresponding curve point the z value of each vertex to the cross product of that point. The y value will be mapped to the curve point's position. Let's see how this is calculated. We'll take one vertex as an example. This vertex has x, y, and z values in space. Its x value is multiplied by the curve's normal vector at a specific point. The result is added to the z value multiplied by the cross product. Then, this result is added to the curve point's position vector corresponding to the vertex's y value. Each curve position is mapped to the parallelopeds y-axis position, since in our example we're using this axis for deformation. Now let's demonstrate this with an example. Let's take this vertex with index 0 and position x equals 4, y equals 0, z equals negative 4. We'll multiply x equals 4 and z equals negative 4 by the curve's normal and cross product vectors at the corresponding point. At this stage, we'll ignore the position vector. So we get these results, which we add together, producing the final result, the new position for this vertex. Now let's repeat this for the other vertices.
you'll see that the object is aligned with the normal vector of the curve at each point. Now let's add the curve's position component to the calculation. Done. This section of the parallel pipe is now deformed and positioned according to the curve. Now we repeat for the rest. The next object section, further along the y-axis, will be repositioned according to the curve, and so on until the last vertex. Note, the object's size along the deformation axis must be normalized to 1. That is, regardless of its actual length along this axis, in this example it's 30 units along y, it must be scaled from 0 to 1 for deformation purposes. How do we do this? Let's look at an example with a more complex object. There's a node called bounding box that reads the min and max vertex positions of an object. The bounding box encloses the object in a virtual box. Its size adapts to the object's dimensions, so it always knows where the edges are. Now, to normalize or compress this size into a range from 0 to 1, we use the Map Range node. Switch the Map Range mode to Vector. In its vector input, connect a position node that reads each vertex's position. Then, connect the min and max outputs from the bounding box to the from min and from max inputs of map range. This way, all vertex positions will be remapped to a 0 to 1 range. Now that we have the tools, sample curve, cross product, bounding box, and map range, let's build the curve deform modifier. Enables wireframe view to better see the mesh edges. Enable geometry nodes workspace. With the cube selected, create a new geometry nodes node tree. We'll create a parallelopiped using a cylinder with four vertices. Set depth to 20 and side segments to 50. Add a transform modifier to rotate 90 degrees on x-axis and 45 degrees on y-axis. Use Join Geometry to connect the object to the group output. Now add a curve. We'll use a spiral in this example. Connect the curve's output to Join Geometry. Now insert the necessary nodes to normalize object size, as explained earlier. Add a bounding box node and connect the object to it. Add a map range set to vector mode. Connect bounding boxes min to map ranges from min and max to from max. Add a position node and connect it to map ranges vector input. Add a sample curve and connect the curve to its curves input. On the object line before Join Geometry, add a Set Position node. This will reposition the vertices. Add a separate XYZ from the map range output and connect its Y output to the factor input of Sample Curve. Um, this will associate object vertex Y positions with the curve's points. Now we'll set up the vector math. 
add two vector math, add nodes, and chain them. Add a cross product node to compute the perpendicular vector. Connect the tangent and normal outputs from sample curve. Connect the position output of sample curve to one add node. Add two scale nodes, vector math set to scale. Connect cross product to one scale and normal to the other. Connect each scale to the remaining add nodes. Now we need to get X and Z trot values from the object's vertex positions. Add a position node followed by a separate XYZ. Connect X to the scale with the normal vector. Connect Z to the scale with the cross product. Now that the math is done, connect the final result to set position. Voila! Your object is now deformed into the shape of the spiral curve. Adjusting the to min and to max values in map range will change the deformation's start and end points. You can add math nodes to smooth these changes. Starting with Blender 4.2, there's a Set Curve Normal node that allows you to change the curve's normal orientation. If you set it to Zit Up, the normals point towards Z, preventing twisting. In this example, we use the Y axis for deformation, but other axes are also possible. For example, along the X axis. To do this, instead of connecting the Y value extracted from the map range to the factor input of the sample curve node, we're going to connect the X value instead. And instead of multiplying the X value by the curve's normal vector, we'll multiply it by the Y value. And finally, we'll input values on the X axis in the to min and to max fields of the map range instead of using the Y axis. Final tips, here we have an object that will be deformed along a closed curve, in other words, a cyclic path. First, let's check whether the object's normal vectors are facing the correct direction. Go to the Overlays menu and enable the Face Orientation checkbox. If the object appears red, as shown here, uh, the normals are pointing the wrong way. To fix this, go to the connection between the curve's normal and tangent vectors used in the cross product operator and reverse the connections. Done. If the object appears blue, its normals are now pointing correctly. Here we can see that when the object reaches the end of the curve, even though it's closed and cyclic, it collapses. The same happens when it reaches the beginning. For a smooth cyclic movement without collapsing, we need to add a set spline cyclic operator after the curve and check the cyclic box. Then, in the line connecting the deformation axis to the factor input of the sample curve, we should insert a math operator of type modulo. Here, we use the floored modulo. The modulo value should be set to one since the factor ranges from zero to one. Done. 
With this, we have a smooth cyclic deformation.